Today we're taking a look at the apt no pub key error. So let's get an example of this. We're going to try to use apt update to update the list of packages available on our system. And you'll notice that when it gets to the package looking for the Azure command line repository at Microsoft.com, that we have the no pub key error saying the public key is not available, so the signature couldn't be verified. And then you'll get some subsequent warnings that come in after that that'll tell you that the packages weren't fetched and essentially the entire upgrade process failed for that particular software. So continuing to use this Microsoft software as an example, let's take a look at what's actually going on. So we're in the Etsy apt directory where the aptitude files are kept and we notice we have some different folders and files. So the sources, these repos, are going to be defined in either sources.list or in a file that's in the directory of sources.list.d. Now Microsoft, being an uh, external, not native package, is going to be in the directory. So looking in the directory, we see that there's going to be various sources of software. And one of them is defined in this azure-cli.list. So let's take a look at that list. Inside this list, we see that it's going out to packages.microsoft.com. That's the repository that we saw in the error message. And it's trying to download the software for Azure command line interface. Let's go back and look at the error messages, and we're going to look at the message really closely this time. Notice that the key that it's looking for is identified by this signature here. So it wants the public key whose value uh, contains this signature at the end of the value. Now let's see if we actually have that key. So what I did is I went out to the Microsoft website and I followed the instructions for installing the package. And in those instructions, you're going to notice that part of the instructions is getting a copy of the signing key from Microsoft themselves and storing that on your system. And although we're using this as an example, this is the process for getting a hold of any of these keys. You go to the official site for that particular package owner and you get the key directly from them. You definitely don't want to get the key from anybody else because someone else might give you a fake key and then you might be downloading fake packages with malware in them or backdoors or other issues. So always get these keys from the official owner of the actual repository itself. And generally speaking, the key will be at the actual repository, like it is in this case here, packages.microsoft.com. So going back over to our system, I downloaded that key and I put it into the key rings file or directory, I should say. So let's take a look at the directory key rings where I put this particular key from Microsoft. So inside of here, you'll see the key and the only difference from the instructions here, in their instructions, they essentially save the key as Microsoft.gpg. The only thing I did that was different is I changed the name to Microsoft Archive Keyring just to make it match the naming convention that I have used for the other key rings that I got from other vendors. Now, is that the key that the system is actually looking for, though? We know what the signature is, but what's the signature of the key we got? So now we're going to check that. So we're going to do sudo gpg, and then we're going to go into the key rings folder and look at the key ring from Microsoft. And it says that it ends in 229cf. So one of the ways we can check and see if this matches is we can use grep, do pattern matching, and we see that indeed the last part or the signature part of this public key does match the key that we were looking for. So now all we have to do is we got to go back to the sources that list and we have to edit the command in order to point it to this key. 
So we're going to go back and do sudo nano. And in this particular case, we were looking at the Microsoft file for Azure command line tool. So we're going to edit that file. And I've already got that edit ready to go here. You can see what I did is I added the signed by attribute or directive. And I set that equal to the path to the Microsoft key exactly. And it's the full path. You don't want to use relative paths here. You want to use the entire path from start to finish, the absolute path. Now notice one other thing. Sometimes you'll have other directives that are already inside of these files. The directives will be inside of these square brackets. So if you see another directive is already there, kind of like the articles AMD64 in this case, just separate your directives with a space. And it doesn't even matter the order. It could have been the sign by attribute first, space, the arch attribute, or in this case, I just left the arch at the beginning and then put the sign by second. So we saved the changes. And now let's go back and do the apt update again. We're going to do sudo apt update. And that gets rid of the error that we were experiencing earlier. And to further show you this, let me show you the native sources.list. So if we do the sudo nano and then just look at the native sources.list, we see that it's going out to the Ubuntu archive. And Ubuntu does have a key to make sure that you're getting the correct packages from them. And like I said, not some kind of modified copy from someone else. So I went back and I moved the Ubuntu keyring into the keyrings directory. And then I just went and pointed using the signed by attribute again that these commands to that particular public key to make sure that I'm getting the correct official software from Ubuntu and it's not some kind of malicious copy. So one other thing about this, these folders, there is a folder trusted.gpg.d where formerly these key ring files were kept, but that's fallen out of favor. And the current methodology is to have this key rings directory for any software that you are managing. Now you might notice that there's also a key rings directory in user share, but that key rings directory is for when automated software is maintaining the keys itself. That's not a directory that you as a user should be manually editing. If you as the user are keeping up with these key rings, you should put them in SE apt key rings and leave that one in the user share for the system software to use. So in summary, if you get the no pub key error, it's one of two reasons. Either you just don't have the key on your system or that key may have been expired and then a uh, third possibility might be you have the key on your system, but you're not pointing the sources file to the correct location where the key actually is. This third case is less common, but occasionally what happens is, is folks will take the key rings out of the trusted.gpg folder and they'll move it to the key rings folder so that they're following all the best practices, but then they might forget to update the sources file to point to the new location easy mistake to make. Much more common is, is you just don't have the key or the key you have is expired. 